brand new Harvest Garden Cafe. And this is Athena and Rich. They are part of our church. They opened this beautiful new cafe right here next to Hillside, Hillside Market. Yeah. Yosemite Springs Parkway, just off the 41. Nailing it. Nailing it. <laughs> We're selling it past it. Yeah. Our church is literally a stone's throw away. It's just right next door. And so this is kind of fun. I want to know why the camera angle is not switching to the angles. Well, we have to talk. Okay, so you go uh, ahead. Okay. Say a little bit about where we are. Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, I think you said we're at the Harvest Garden Cafe. And Rich and Athena have built just this incredible environment out of what was... Uh, oh, and it's a thrift store, too. We don't want to forget that. They have a thrift store, too. A this and that thrift store. But this used to be, uh, I think it was Century 21, like, yeah. uh, real estate. It was just mm -hmm. office cubicles. It was, like, maybe, like... I don't know, eight feet tall, all white, you know, an office. And so they have just really vitalized it, totally transformed it. It's such a fun environment. And gave it and you right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. And they have like, like the, the gift of hospitality. Of do this. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we, are we are definitely giving them a plug because they've, they've given us the space, space to come and be family, family and to also do the podcast, podcast today. So, so it's been, uh, and, and with, with their thrift store, they've also so just committed to give 10% of all the proceeds back to, the, to the, our church. church. And so, so they just really, really believe in what God is doing at Wild CC, which, which is just amazing. amazing. You know, they're just living out, out living, living out Christ and their place of work. And so, Harvest. Harvest Garden Cafe. Harvest Garden Cafe. You, you got, got me saying market. market. I know, I know. <laughs> it's not market. It's it is by Cafe. the market. People. It is by it the is market. It is not a market. Yeah. yeah. If you are just popping in here, we have gone live on Facebook, and we're kind of working on the camera angles and making sure everything's <laughs> up and going as we kind of get started here. But this is the cutting room floor. Yeah. Yep. We meet every Tuesday to talk about Sunday's message. Yep. 10 a.m. <laughs> 10 a.m. And so we're doing it live because this place, like Johnny just said, is doing a thrift store that's giving back 10% to the church. And this place is, is, it's not even open yet. I think it's opening in just a few minutes. And it's, everyone's been talking about how great the food is and how fun everything is here. And we just really love this new family that's part of our church. And like you said, opening a business. But anyway, if you're part of watching it right now, the cutting room floor, the main thing we want to do is answer your questions. Yeah. So here on Facebook, I have my phone right in front of me. Whenever you post a question, I will present it. And mainly because this Sunday we talked about the new covenant. So the forgiveness, when we talked about that part, um, I really, really wanted to emphasize that if you can't, take the forgiveness but i didn't do that side of it or give the forgiveness i didn't even talk about that side yeah. so that's the cutting room floor it it's if we have to be able to give it just as much as take it where i think most people struggle is with taking it personally yeah. but i did talk about like then you don't understand the price that was paid for the gift yeah yeah that was that was that was a lot yeah. How are you, Johnny? Yes. What? Yeah. Johnny, think, what's your takeaway from this? The takeaway, yeah. So you were talking about how some people still live in the old covenant. This idea of having to come to a priest. Or I was even talking to a friend. He's like, every morning I wake up and I feel like I have to repent for my sins again. And and it's such an interesting reality that we've been brought into with this new covenant where if like it has literally been and paid for us, past, present, future. Um, anything like the way, the way I describe it is like, let's say this case was the entirety of my life from beginning to end before I was even here, God saw all of it, every mistake and, and the full price it would take to make me holy and blameless before him. And he said, Johnny's worth it. Danielle's worth it. David's worth it. So we wrestle with that. We feel like, Oh, I mean, I got to go back and make another sacrifice. I got to go back and, you know, and, and, to start all over and get, keep getting these redos where in reality it was once for all yeah and how it really takes the holy spirit to bring this revelation understanding to us because it changes everything right we're not groveling we're not self-evasive but rather where hey i am a new creation in christ i have been given authority i get to live out this life um and the joy and the abundance that jesus talks about and um 
Yeah, I think I think my personal struggles were a big part of this sermon this week because I do struggle with feeling forgiveness for my sins of past. And they're they're kind of a long time ago. I still sin. I'm not like some super person or something. But but I there's some things in the past that I just you know, you just you want to do over and God gave us that. Mm. But then the second one that you just mentioned. So when I showed the picture of Noel, there is so many times in my life where I feel like I'm not good enough or doing enough, especially as a pastor. And I've given a lot, but I still should be giving more and just so on and so forth. And then to see that picture of my daughter, wow, yeah, I just felt like, you know, that's all he wants, is that relationship with me. Right. Yeah, we keep feeling like we have to earn it. Yeah. Um, and the whole point, I think, of the Mosaic Covenant, one of the main points was to teach us, you can't do this without me. Like, there's no, there is no way to God to set through the free gift of grace. Like, Jesus was the only one who could do it, and he, and he did it for us. And so we cheapen the gift, we re-crucify him, the Bible talks about, Every, Every time, time we feel like, like God, I'm, I'm not, not good, good enough to deserve this grace. grace. I'm not good, good enough. Like I have to do more. And it's so, so counterintuitive, like but that's like the whole entire gospel. gospel. Is that yeah, you're right. You're not good enough. But Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. I skipped a couple of things that hit the floor. One of them was I I had pages where I was going through the entire Bible. And describing how, what the judges did, what the kings did, what the prophets did, each one of them, how they would kind of teach us right and wrong. And what happens if you choose wrong, what happens if you choose good. So that was in my notes and just kind of got cut out. I think I even did it in first but not second. And then I went into the new covenant and in the unleashed church. And the other thing that was cut is at the end, I really talked about rabbis and how everyone had to go through the rabbi to get all their information. And I was just like, I don't know. It got lost somewhere in my sermon, but um, yeah, both of those things were just so eye opening for me that back in those days, they, they got all their information from God through someone. And now it's a direct connection. So let me ask you, I'll throw this to you guys. Do you think people mess that up? That's the part I'm always a little worried about. Like, okay, when I have so many people come up to me as a pastor and say, God told me this. And I'm like, I don't think God told you that. So how, how can we connect and make sure we have the right conversation? What's interesting, though, I think where the church has messed up is we've allowed grace and teaching and patience and process for a lot of things um, when it pertains to Christianity. But we have very little grace when it comes to trusting and following and like spiritual things like uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, um, words from God, right? Is this God? We kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like someone messes up, like, dude, stop it. Like, And uh, I think that's, we almost recreate more problems because we don't offer a lot of safe places for people to make mistakes and be met by a patient, loving God who then helps correct because Holy Spirit's a good teacher. But oftentimes we're not in the, like school sessions, if you will, um, being able to practice it. We're just kind of expected to get it right the first time. So what we've been given, obviously, is God's word um, as, a, as, a, as a tutor, as a guideline to understand this is what the Father has chosen to reveal to us about his nature. I don't think it's a box to confine him into, but I think it's just what he's saying. So this is what you need to know about me. But I think he can be so much more and so much greater than just even what the Bible recognizes. So you have to understand, all right, this is what God said about himself. But then you also have to have relationships, practice, experience with faith in what you feel like God is telling you to do. I mean, I really feel like God is saying this. Okay, well, try it. Let's test it. And Oh, dude, yeah, that was a big flop. That was not God or whatever. But he doesn't waste it because now you've learned. Maybe that doesn't sound like that. Maybe he doesn't tell me to do these things. And you grow into it. 
So, yeah, so I, th- I think that's the big part. We need to be he- willing to go through the messy parts of growth and learning yeah. for us to get to a place where we know how to discern things. I mean, it's not just like an on and off switch. I mean, sometimes Holy Spirit can move like that and just deposit in somebody this crazy, cool moment. But a lot of times it takes growth and faith and people willing to walk you through it. Yeah, I love a lot of things you just said there. By the way, she brought your coffee. Yeah. If you want to try it. I love so many things you said there. One, you're not always right. And that's great. Because a lot of people need to start from that position. Yeah, yeah we're probably going to mess it up a lot. I wish everyone had that sort of heart. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and it, if it seems like a good thing and mentors or, or people of wisdom are also speaking into it, I'm going to step into it. But I, I might not be hearing God right. And I, yeah. I think that's such an important place to start from. Well, well, so just make it personal. personal. We're, we're in the middle of trying to buy a house. And it's a big stretch for us. Um, and I can't guarantee you that it's from God. Like, that's if I could, then it wouldn't be fully required faith, right? And so I told Ashley, like, we may be, even if we came to financial ruin because of it, like, we're willing to, to take risks, which makes us grow. Yeah. Our faith is being strengthened because of the intensity of the pressure of God, if you don't show up, and, and, you know, and getting a renter or, or this, this uh, assessment or this, whatever, whatever. like all, all the different hurdles of buying a house, house they won't work. So, so just, just know that God doesn't waste anything and yeah. that um, as, as long as my wife and I are, are drawing closer, closer to each other and to the Lord, then whatever comes from it, we're growing. We're being built into the image of Christ and he can utilize it. We don't want it to suck. We don't want to miss the Lord. So we're going slow. We're getting mentors. We're getting, you know, outside points of view. But ultimately, we just have to be okay with trying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Good morning, Laura. Thank you for saying hi. We really appreciate that. Anyone that's popping in here and watching, we are live at the Harvest Garden Cafe. Harvest Garden Cafe. <laughs> Athena and Rich are uh, members of our church. And so we thought we would do it live from their cafe. We know the sound and things aren't quite right. So we'll just keep. Keep pressing on here and uh, get better at it. But And I love talking about giving, uh, not because I'm a pastor. I actually don't love talking about it as a pastor. But as a person, giving is one of those really, really good, good first steps in trusting God. Yeah. And then I think you actually, when you're in a giving mode, start to hear God in new ways. Yes. You're really invested. If you... I would, I would go so far, I don't know, I'm going to be speaking on this pretty soon, but I would go so far to say, if you're not giving, it's probably, you probably are struggling with that relationship with God, that, that communication with God, because you haven't fully trusted in Him. Yeah. It's not even about your church or the pastor or anything like that. It's just trusting Him with that first yeah. really big connecting point. Mm. Yeah, that's a good example. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't know if we want to keep pressing in, trying to make it work. I don't know if the sound's working or not. And I don't see any questions popping up. So let's do this. First of all, my shake is so amazing (laughs) that it's really hard to put it down to have this conversation. It's so good. How was your coffee? Awesome. Awesome. Very Very great. Cool cup. Good coffee. What kind of it's coffee got, did you get? Uh, I think some form of latte. It's got little floaty, yummy brown things in there. I think it's cinnamon. Mm-hmm. Floaty, yummy brown things. Mm-hmm. How's your tea? So delicious, but I'm in competition with my ice cream. Right. Take float thing. I'm, it's. I'm gonna order a breakfast burrito, and I can't wait for that. I'm starving, even though this is, this is peanut butter banana proteins of some kind it feels like a full meal banana split shake it's pretty awesome yeah <laughs> you know and even like just the fact we're talking about food and in this space like this is like if we weren't in a new covenant like even things like this would be different because we would be every day back at the temple killing an animal you know, and just like a totally different worldview, but to be able to deeply enjoy a banana shake 
comes from, I think, like, when you really begin to recognize, man, God, you have saved me. And I am a, a, a co-heir with Christ. It's like seeing the world with color for the first time. Time, yeah, you know what I mean, and you can, and you can appreciate nuances of cinnamon and coffee and, and a banana God, that God made and all this other stuff. Um, and it almost stirs you to a place of worship because you're like, God, you're just that good. Like, why did you why did you create flavor? Thank you. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. you didn't have to do yeah. that, wow. right? And so you go, you don't get there until you've allowed yourself to receive the grace and forgiveness that we're talking about in the new covenant, and. uh and, and then when you start dealing, dealing that, that, then it's like, that's, that's much more of a positive, positive thing to invite, invite people into. Yeah. No one wants to be invited into, hey, man, like, you're going to hell if you don't, you know, get your act straight. And then you better hope you're not. Because, I mean, I was even talking to a person, and it was like, like, man, yeah, my mom, you know, just passed recently, and I prayed over her because you know, I didn't know if she had any sins left, and hopefully, you know, she's going to be okay. And it was just like that weird, like, fire insurance mentality of, I hope I don't die with unconfessed sin. But understanding that God's grace is sufficient. His forgiveness is that big. So praise God for Praise God for milkshake. No yeah. Cinnamon. Harvest, Harvest Garden. Harvest Garden. Harvest Garden. <laughs> the joke, the joke <laughs> here is I messed it up 15 times before we started. So I've got it now. And then the pick and thrift. Pick this and that. This and that. <laughs> thrift shop. This and that thrift shop. Hey, thanks for being with us today. We appreciate you guys for being here. This Sunday, we continue the Covenant series. Next Saturday, we have a community yard sale happening at the church. Yes. There's going to be, there's already 20 people signed up to be selling different lots of stuff. So it's going to be really big if you're watching this locally. If you are local, come join us this Sunday at 9 or 11 a.m. And then we will be back next Tuesday, 10 a.m., right here with the podcast. So, thanks for being here, and we'll see you next time.